A Special Place by Belinda Vandeloo. Lovingly dedicated to Barbara Kuhn Vandeloo, my marvelous mother who instilled in me the ability to live my life with joy. Christmas 2006. Not far away from the great green house I grew up in was a small valley next to the Grand Mississippi River. When we were very young, Mom took the three of us there on a scouting picnic. It was a real treat during a childhood made difficult by Dad's depression. That afternoon we escaped the dark clouds in our home and enjoyed a delicious day of running barefoot in the tall grass under a bluer than blue sky. We joined a dozen other kids already playing in this paradise. The hills were the best part of this place because we all had flat yards and a flat school playground. We ran up, up in slow motion and came down twice as fast as we'd ever dreamed possible. We pretended we were logs and rolled down, down, down from the top of the hill. One of the scout leaders hid watermelons behind bushes to test our hunting skills. Later, we all played cowboys and Indians until our moms called us to a yummy picnic lunch in the summer shade of a glorious oak tree. Close to the entrance of the valley was a strange rock that all us kids called Lincoln's Chair because we'd seen a picture at school of Abe Lincoln's statue and he sat on a chair just like that rock. We took turns sitting on the chair and pretending to be the President of the United States. It became an unspoken ritual that you had to sit in Lincoln's chair before you entered the valley. But after it rained, the birds used the seat as a bird bath. The valley and hills had a top secret name known only by us kids who had named it. One sunny fall afternoon during the last picnic of the season, we held a powwow to choose a name. We suggested all sorts of funny names and ended up giggling uncontrollably. No one remembers who said it first, but after that we always called it Giggling Hills. As we grew into teenagers, most of us never visited Giggling Hills again, having graduated to city parks and other forms of entertainment. But my feet would find their way there after school or on weekends. Planting myself in my spot... I would dream and pray or talk to my dog, who was guarding me from ferocious squirrels. My eyes wandered over the riverbank hills and on up the trees to the clouds as I scrunched my back into the great oak tree that watched me grow up. When college came and claimed my time, I only occasionally passed giggling hills when I was out jogging, but I never failed to look towards it if only to honor my special memories as I continued puffing and panting on my way. During a season of sadness, when all my relationships roller-coastered and loneliness latched onto my heart, I surprised myself by returning to those hills. Their familiarity lent me a much-needed haven. Sheltered under those branches, I longed for the simplicity of childhood, Knowing I could never return to the past didn't hinder my heart from absorbing the kindness of the friendly old oak and the slow-moving river. For many years, I lived far away from Giggling Hills. Perhaps the oak feared I had forgotten it, and the hills only remembered the echo of my footsteps, while the river simply missed my company. After my dad's funeral... I was staying near the great green house of my childhood. One afternoon, a gentle breeze carried the call of the hills, the valley, the river, and the trees to my ears. I had been looking for a spot to reflect and a place to open up my heart and let some creativity spill out onto paper. So I returned. Some of the trees were gone, and the city had put in railroad tie stairs on the log rolling hill, but the place was the same. And, as I passed Lincoln's chair heading down to the small valley, I instinctively searched for watermelons under the bushes. I climbed, even slower than my childhood slow motion, up, up the highest hill that overlooked the river. Cresting the hill, I smiled when I came upon a family having a picnic under my oak tree. 
Nestling under another tree, I put pen to paper and wrote freely for hours. Perhaps when I'm old and gray, I will still go there, and Giggling Hills will warmly welcome me one more time. When I was a child, it was my special place of laughter and light. As a teenager, I found peace and hope there. Growing into adulthood, it offered me refuge and a place of creative contentment. It has been my special place all these years, and hopefully for years to come. I've never told anyone about it until now. Giggling Hills was given to me in my childhood, actually to all those children, but somehow especially to me. It was a gift from my mother that I cherish, because it came from her wish to give me joy. She gave me a place that showed me how to smile in the dark. The end.